Model of the mind will be today's subject of discussion. In today's session, what we will do is we will take a look at model of the mind given by Freud, Jung, Indian yoga psychology method, Tantra approach, Sri Aurobindo's model of the mind, model of the mind called information processing based model of the mind and at the end of it i will present my own model of the mind called heat heat is an acronym that stands for holistic elemental analysis and therapy so we will do a survey of model of the mind given by various schools thinkers traditions and then towards the end i will present my own model of the mind So let us look at how history of model of the mind has evolved in psychotherapy. In the Western tradition, we have two profound thinkers, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, who have given a model of the mind of their own. Western psychotherapy, particularly psychoanalytic psychotherapy, has had many other thinkers like Klein, Bion, Winnicott, Kohut, Habib Davanlu, but they were not in a structural sense. They were not in a structural sense model of the mind creators. Freud and Jung were very deeply speaking model of the mind creators. After Freud and Jung, we do not have people of the same caliber who could create a structural model of the mind. So what they did was, they gave us a few phenomena, which in their opinion were critical in determination of pathology and for So, after Freud and Jung, we did not have people of the same caliber who could give us a structural model of the mind. So, what they gave us was a few phenomena which were very important for pathogenesis and healing, but they could never create a structural model of the mind. Klein could not create one. Dion could not, Winnicott could not, Kohut could not, Habib Davanlu could not. Laka did create some version of a model of the mind. But apart from the three, I think Freud, Jung and Lacan, we did not have model of the mind creators in psychoanalysis. In fact, Jung and Lacan gave one model of the mind, but Freud in his lifetime produced three different models of the mind. Topographical, structural and the two forces model. Few people consider this to be a model of the mind because this is not actually a structural model of the mind. This is more like a functional model of the mind and that too in a very generic sense. 
so many people don't even call this a model of the mind usually the topographical and the structural models these two are called as models of the mind given by freud in the yoga tradition in the east in the east in the classical yoga tradition in the east in the classical yoga tradition there is a model of the mind which is detailed out by this four sub structures of the mind we'll come to it later and then in the east apart from the classical yoga model of the mind there is a tantra model of the mind and then shri arbindo the tantra model of the mind is based upon the concept of chakra and the nadis and the energy flowing through the chakra and the nadis and this model of the mind is used by acupressure acupuncture reiki pranic healing tai chi martial arts uh, nadi vigyan and siddha they all use the tantra model of the mind and shri arbindo has created a model of the mind which is one of the most comprehensive and integral and he has combined all the eastern traditions much of the eastern traditions not all but much of the eastern traditions so something from this part classical yoga part something from the tantra part and to both of them he has added things of his own which are completely novel innovative and created a full school in the sense of psychology in the sense she have been those path or if we call it a school in a limited way which would not be the correct word but if we were to use it this school would have philosophy it would have model of the mind it would have pathogenesis it would have healing and it would also have self development so it is a full school in that sense she arbind though brings in two new concepts of the psychic being and the central being which we'll go into later so freud has given two models out of the three models two we can think of as structural models jung has given one model there is one classical yoga classical yoga model a tantra model she are with those model then there is a information processing model of the mind which is popular in the cognitive schools and then we have the heat model of the mind that i have created to start off with and it will develop in the course of time so let us go into it one by one all these models of the mind freud's first model of the mind is the topographical model of the mind and here he says there are three parts of the mind the unconscious the preconscious and the conscious conscious is that which we are aware of so input comes from the environment into the conscious mind or the conscious mind is dealing with the environment what we are conscious of at this moment that we are in a discussion that we are dealing with freud's topographical model in front of us all of that is active in our conscious mind if i ask you what you had for dinner last night it suddenly becomes active on demand because it is in the preconscious which is latent unless made active on demand and then if i ask you what happened in your childhood when you were 2 years of age that would be in the unconscious even if you want you cannot recall it so this border line between the preconscious and the unconscious is called the repression barrier and the force of repression works downwards it does not allow contents from the unconscious to come to the conscious mind because if they do it will lead to activation of unpleasant effects like fear anger pain guilt shame envy and so on so 
this was Freud's first model of the mind called the topographical model of the mind, where there is a very large unconscious and much smaller conscious and pre-conscious. And it is from here that determination takes place of the most important events. And then we find the effects in the pre-conscious and the conscious. And it is here that pathology resides. And therefore, we have to work here to undo the pathology. And we have to get material past the repression barrier so that it comes out in therapy and we know what it is. And the entry into the unconscious mind is through five routes. Free association in therapy, analysis of dreams, art, slips and hypnosis. These are the five ways of getting into the unconscious mind. One more way can be projective testing. That can be one more additional way of getting into the unconscious. Second model of the mind Freud proposed was Freud's structural model of the mind. What Freud did was he brought in three ideas of id, ego and superego and put them in the topographical model. According to Freud, id is the reservoir of instincts and aggression, pleasure and aggression unbridled desires, unattenuated desires for pleasure and aggression. Ego, sorry, superego is the reservoir of ideals. Thou shall and thou shall not. And ego is the rational, practical, adaptive agency which tries to create a compromise between superego and id, which are opposites. Id is almost like the animal in man and superego is almost like the saint in man. And some part is taken from here, some part is taken from here and the ego creates a compromise so that balance is maintained here and ego is al also able to adapt to the environment outside. So ego is the agent of reality who creates a compromise at the service of survival pleasure and growth. And the ego is partly conscious, partly unconscious. Superego is partly conscious, partly unconscious. It is completely unconscious. This was Freud's second model of the mind, the structural model of the mind. Freud, towards the end of his life, also presented a small, concise model, which was more of a functional model, called the two forces model of Eros and Thanatos life instinct and death instinct, but it was so generic and so functional and so unstructural that most people don't even consider to be a model of the mind. They consider only two models, topographical and structural, given by Freud to be the two models of the mind. Then we come to Jung's model of the mind. Carl Jung created a model of the mind very different from Freud's model of the mind. In Jung's model of the mind, there is a self. And the self is like the seed. Just as the blueprint of the entire tree is in the seed. Similarly, the blueprint of our entire life and personality is in the self. And surrounding the self is collective unconscious, which is a new concept. It is not found in Freud. So Jung says the unconscious can be divided into two parts, the personal unconscious and the collective unconscious. The personal unconscious differs from person to person and that has been created because of the constitution of the person and the unique experiences of the person. Whereas the collective unconscious is there by virtue of our birth into the species, it is like a species endowment rather than something personal. And you realize this because he found the dreams and the uncontrolled expressions in psychosis of people even in sophisticated cities resembled those 
of tribal population living in jungles completely unconnected to the civilization so how can there be such commonality between the two he also looked at comparative mythology and he found certain elements were common to the whole mythology of the whole world and he therefore surmised that in dreams in free associations in uncontrolled expressions in mythology in literature there are certain elements which are common to all human groups and that cannot be only because of interaction it is something from inside out rather than outside in and therefore he postulated that there is something in our some layer of our unconscious mind where there is a similarity in all human beings across the world so this is more like a collective unconscious and this collective unconscious is like a fingerprint we all have a fingerprint but the fingerprint is different so we all have a collective unconscious but the exact flavor is different and out in the collective unconscious are archetypes the archetypes so the archetypes populate the collective unconscious what are the archetypes you said we the society is not what we see by design consciously done it is an unconscious design which is manifesting outside so he says in any society we find these roles performed by people the role of a father the role of a mother the role of a child the role of a poet role of magician warrior hero the old wise man the teacher the healer these yug says are roles found in all societies there cannot be any society without these roles being performed by somebody and rules yug says these are archetypes these are archetypes that are inside of us and what we see outside is this archetypes activating themselves and leading us to behave in particular ways so archetypes are elements in the collective unconscious which represent in latent form what society is outside in its fully realized form so the roles that we play now how do we understand it jung says think of human life and think of the biological program of life so for you what is important is the program of life and what is the program of life the constant element in all human beings is this everyone has a infancy everyone has a childhood everyone has a teenage everyone has a young age everyone becomes a parent everyone becomes old and everyone dies this is the constant program of life for the whole species anybody belonging to the human species has to obey this program of life and across this biological program of life we have to perform roles so the biological program will be infancy childhood teenage young age middle age old age and death this is the biological program of life and across this we perform roles like child student the teenager which is mythologized as the prince trying to get oneself out of the hold of the octopus and freeing oneself from the hold of the octopus which usually is the all entangling parents and then the lover the warrior the hero the enterprising businessman the teacher the healer and finally the old wise man to whom everyone comes for advice so these are the archetypes which are populating the collective unconscious and according to age the self activates or deactivates appropriate archetypes so when the age demands the self activates the archetype of old wise man the self activates the archetype of 
the warrior the poet so the self regulates the activation and deactivation of archetypes in order to facilitate the program of life this is the collective unconscious then we have the personal unconscious like in case of freud and then we have the ego so jung's ego is completely in the unconscious unlike freud where the ego is partly conscious and partly unconscious and you puts does not talk about super ego you talks about the moral complex which is one of the archetypes in the collective unconscious so unlike in the freudian model of the mind we don't see super ego mention it is one of the archetypes called the moral archetypes very important for health is the ego self axis if the ego listens to the self and leads an authentic life according to his program of life which the self contains and the self activates and deactivates are types corresponding to the authentic program if that the ego listens to and factors into its living the ego self axis is strong in one is living an authentic life but if that does not happen if the ego listens more to the environment outside and less to the self and the collective unconscious inside then trouble starts so one of the core goals of jungian therapy is to strengthen the ego self axis by looking inwards and discovering one's path of individuation one's personal myth and then remove obstacles on the path and move forward so this is jung's model of the mind very different from freud's model of the mind jung uses the word self in a slightly different way from winnicott and cohut for winnicott and cohut self is phenomenological created after birth in a process but for jung self is innate inborn and structural in nature it is not a functionally created entity like in case of winnicott and cohut in cohut it is created functionally but then it becomes like a structural entity in winnicott it is always a functional entity and jung at times talks about self being at the center at times he talks as the self as being around this psyche but i prefer this to be a more coherent model we can see one of the elements here is jung's model in one sense when it comes to making a transition from one layer to the other there are no open spaces so if you have to go from the collective unconscious to the conscious you have to go through the contents of the personal unconscious if somebody makes an opening here an open space then there are some open spaces where the paths through which you can go from collective unconscious to the conscious without interacting with any contents of the personal unconscious that would be a open union model but generally you does not give that opening i have put that opening in the heat model so this is jung's model of the mind then we come to the yoga psychology model of the mind there are many models of mind in yoga one model is this the environment is environment makes us stimulate gives us stimulation to our senses so senses are in contact with the environment here and the senses report bring the sensations to this mechanism and in this mechanism we have manas chitta ahankar buddhi and atma so manas is the desiring mind manas is the desiring mind it is roughly equivalent to id but it is not completely equivalent to id because these words are not exact translations of anything so manas is the desiring mind ahankar is i 
or the ego but this ego again is different from freudian or jungian ego this ego has three to four attributes first it is a drive for power second it is identification of the soul with the body the whole mechanism third it is a center which creates i and not i and fourth it permeates the whole system every cell of the body so that everything runs in harmony so this ahankar is not only a drive for power it is also a variable which talks about identification of the soul to the system it permeates the whole system and provides some sort of intelligence and coordination to the whole system it also is drive for power it also is a separation of me from the other i and not i so these are all the attributes of ahankar ahankar also has desires particular desire of power so when it comes to power ahankar overlaps with manas then we have buddhi buddhi is the analytical intelligence and then we have chitta which is a reservoir of impressions from the past and the present all the karma are here all the karmic part is here in the chitta so this is a unconscious but different from a freudian and jungian unconscious this is unconscious not only of this birth but of all the past births and this is the soul or atma and there is something which is called one particular part of buddhi is vivek and the vivek is uh, observing will and intelligence which can reflect on anything including the buddhi and that vivek is very important for self transformation because by observation the power of the manas ahankara and chitta can be reduced and buddhi can be used for freedom from compulsion to this thing and as one becomes more free this comes to the forefront the soul or the atma or the self comes to the forefront so this is the most popular model of the mind in classical yoga psychology in my book on dream analysis i use this model also for dream analysis details if you want of this there is a very good book uh, psychotherapy east and west a unifying paradigm by swami ajaya and rudolf dr rudolf valentine it's a very old book but if you have a copy or if you can get a copy from amazon or somewhere it's a very good book to have which gives you explanation of detailed explanation of this model along with western psychotherapy models So can you will you send the name uh, through message? I message it. Yes. So any questions on this? No, sir. No. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll uh, send a new link. The Zoom is getting over. 